I swear by Mummy and Daddum. This detestable festers the echt Fester Adams. So hey, 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 let's dance the dance a brotherly love. Mamusha! That was a clip from the 1991 movie The Adams Family, starring the inimitable Raul Julia. An actor of breathtaking talent, Raul Julia is known not just for his work in Hollywood, but also for his groundbreaking roles on the New York stage, including unforgettable performances in Shakespeare productions for the public theater. Sadly, Julia's career was cut short by his untimely death 25 years ago at age 54. Thirteen's American Masters and Latino Public Broadcasting's Voces join forces to present the first documentary about Julia's amazing life and work. Raul Julia, The World's a Stage, is a portrait of the late actor's journey from his native Puerto Rico to the creative hotbed of New York City in the 1960s, and then to prominence on Broadway and Hollywood. Here's a look. Raul was extraordinarily magnetic. What was also true is that he spoke in his proud Puerto Rican accent. Why brand they us with faith? He was proud of being Puerto Rican. I could bring my own culture, my own Puerto Rican background to Shakespeare. She moves me not or not removes me. The first time I saw him in Shakespeare in the park was just absolutely mesmerized. He was on the poster everywhere, and it was so inspiring to see that everywhere, in every train station, every bus ad. I've never seen an actor like Rowe. It was art in front of you. My dad really felt that he could create change in the world and be an activist as an actor and through the roles that he played. It's no longer you or I, it's you and I. He was undeniable. When you have that kind of talent and discipline, success couldn't be avoided. It's all done within a context of love. That's the beauty of it, you see? And joining us now to talk about the documentary and about Raul Julia's enduring contributions to film, theater, and the world is his wife, Meryl Polloway Julia. Meryl, thanks so much for joining us today. You're welcome, Rafael. Thank you for asking me to be with you. Let's go back to the beginning. How did you and Raul come together? Was it love at first sight, or did he have to exhaust his oceanic talents uh, to win you over? <laughs> Well, I always say I fell in love with Raul instantly when he removed his sunglasses and he looked at me with those two gigantic, beautiful brown eyes. And I said, wow, it's really something. <laughs> and um, that's what I say. I don't know how long it took him to get around to feeling the same way about me. But we wound up together. <laughs> so listen, uh, a number of people in the film make the point that in the course of his career, uh, Raul broke new ground as a Hispanic actor, as a socially committed actor, and as an actor, period. And I think the film pretty much shows that that's all true. Why then did it take 25 years to make a film like this about this larger-than-life man? Well, that's a good question. I don't know why. I'm, I'm thankful that it happened. It happened because Ben de Jesus came to me uh, two and a half years ago, and he asked me the same question. He said, how come there's not a documentary of Raul? He's not my generation, but I grew up loving the theater and, and uh, knowing about him, and I wanted to make a documentary about him. I know that there has been a great outpouring of affection for Raul through the years, and we give many awards in Raul's name through the Puerto Rican Family Institute. So this was all happening in the last past 25 years, and then Ben came to me and asked me, and I said, yes, I think that would, would be great. <laughs> so, you know, um, it's hard enough for an actor born and bred in this country to make it in this cruel business. How much harder was it for uh, a man who was born and bred in Puerto Rico, came to the United States as an adult, to make it in the business? How hard, in other words, was it for Raul Julia, at least at the beginning? I think it was challenging in the beginning, because he had some immediate success. And uh, he won the Ted Mac Amateur Hour when he was still in high school. Uh, as a, you know, as a green, very green performer, but obviously there was talent there. And then Orson Bean saw him in a production at, at here in Puerto Rico at El Convento Hotel. And after the show, he said, Raul, you must come to New York. 
And then Raul was thinking of coming to New York or going to Europe. So, he, And then after meeting Orson Bean, he came to New York. I think what happens with Raul is that he really was very motivated to be successful. He knew where he was. And he was born in Puerto Rico. So he, he was... My son makes this point. My son, Benjamin, makes this point. Being that you're not Latino in Puerto Rico, you are you in Puerto Rico because everyone speaks Spanish and, and English and you're all together. If you, when you come here, then all of a sudden you're Latino. And so Raul just had wonderful parents. He had a wonderful idyllic upbringing here in, in where I am now in Puerto Rico. So he was armed with... Um, the, uh, like a certain knowledge of who he was, a confidence, I would say. And he was able to press through everything to make it in the end. You know, I, I think I told you this when we first met a few years ago, that the first time I ever saw Raul perform, I didn't know anything about him. I went with my brother after I moved to New York to see, uh, to see him in Shakespeare in the Park in Taming of the Shrew with Meryl Streep. And after the performance, I remember telling my brother, this is the first Shakespearean actor who, who's, who I can clearly understand when he speaks Shakespearean. And not only that, he's, that who does it so naturally that it seems contemporary. You know, I, I think it's safe to say that he was one of the greatest Shakespearean actors of the late 20th century. What made this Puerto Rican actor such a great Shakespearean actor? Well, I, I, he loved acting and he loved the words. He understood the words himself because he studied them in school. He had been knowing about Shakespeare and Cervantes, the storyteller of the Spanish heritage, uh, since high school. And he always studied them, always appreciated them, and always was speaking those words. So they didn't come as a novelty to him. So listen, you say in the film that in his life and work, Raul tried to be an example of what was possible. What did he teach you about what was possible, and what does he teach us? What can he teach us about what is possible? Uh, seeing Raul operate through life, he had, he was a big fat yes to life, let me say that. <laughs> uh, he did a lot, people had a lot of requests, and he didn't like to say no, so he would say yes, and he did a lot of things, uh, which gave him great pleasure. I would say that is one thing that inspired me, seeing him. And even after, when he passed away, when people would ask me, can we do this, can we do that, I would try and be like him and say yes. <laughs> so I hope I've done that as much as, as, as I can in his name. And it just, he, ha he was a fully self-expressed person, I would say, fully self-expressed and joyful throughout his life, even when, when things, you know, were not going uh, as he would have liked them to go, he still had this capacity to say, okay, that's not going so well, but all the rest of my life I have to live with great joy in the moment. Mm -hmm. Let's be in the moment, very present. Well, as you know, I had the opportunity to interview him once, and it was a joyous occasion for me. And it's a joyous occasion that I had this chance to talk to you, too, Meryl. Thank you so much for joining us to talk to us about this great man and this wonderful documentary. Thank you, Rafael. My pleasure. For more information on American Masters and Voces special presentation of Raul Julia, The World's a Stage, head on over to our website at metrofocus.org.